Okay, this is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE3303 solids. Got a couple of shear and moment diagrams. First, we want to uh, let's review the loads and what's given to us. Here's the the full beam, which is a cantilever at this end, and we were given that the reaction at A vertical reaction is six kips. We had to figure this eight, but I'll show you, talk about that in a second here. We had a two kip per foot uniform load over five feet. Then we had a point C that we wanted to know some internal forces at. Go over another two feet from there, from C, to a concentrated force couple, a moment of five kip feet. Three feet further from that, we had a roller at B, Point B of when the, we were given the reaction was 10 kips, and then a cantilever of three feet. Finally, at that, at the end of that, we had a uh, sloping force, 10 kips to the left and down at a 4-3 slope. So we could simplify that as eight kips horizontal, six kips down. A lot of people didn't notice that. Then we, first we were asked to uh, solve for some internal forces at point C here. So we were given a little free body diagram of, uh, of that point of that the left part of the beam to the left of C. We put our known forces on a free body diagram, which I just have taken this eight kips and transferred it over here to my pin at A. And then I have the given six kips up, two kips per foot down for five feet. I write, I assume positive internal forces on the right side of that section, and this is the direction that they go, positive forces according to our sign convention. It's real easy, I just need to do sum of forces in the x direction, and that's eight, the support, plus eight, assume, plus NC, assuming it in tension, the positive. And rearranging, I get the internal force is really 8 kips compression. Kind of been redundant there, negative 8 and C. I want to emphasize that. Sum of forces in the Y is 0, positive is up. So I have my 6 kip reaction. First, I've written my negative 2 uniform load over the 5 feet plus the 6 kip reaction minus VC because it's down in the positive direction on the right hand side. So VC works out to be negative four kips which means it's going to be up on the right hand side of the section I've cut. Uh, finally the sum of the moments at C I've assumed positive counterclockwise is equal to zero. I've got negative six times seven for the support load times its seven foot moment arm plus two kips per foot times five feet times the distance of two feet here plus two and a half feet to the center of that rectangle plus MC which is positive because it's in the same direction as my sign assumption working out the math MC is equal to 42 minus 45 or negative three foot kips the great thing about these uh, doing a shear and moment diagram is I get to check these numbers with my shear and moment diagram, which we're now ready to draw. I'm just going to use the graphical method. Makes it real easy. I start off on the left end. I go up six kips. Note that I've given the units over here in positive and negative. So I'm starting off at six. Then, slope of my shear diagrams, the value of my load diagram, which is negative two kips per foot, so in five feet, it's going to slope down two times five or ten from six to negative four. So just kind of draw on that point in advance. Shear diagram is going to look something like that. That's supposed to be a straight line. Negative four. Then I want to figure out what that distance is for future reference where it goes to zero because that's going to be important on my moment diagram, of course. Draw like that. So 
The change in the shear diagram from any two points is the area under the load diagram. So from 6 to 0 is a change of 6. It's going to go negative 6. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. That gives me that distance, 3 feet. I want to show that very important point. Okay, back up to my load diagram to continue drawing my shear diagram. I look, there's nothing happening here load-wise in the uh, force direction, FY direction, so my uh, shear diagram just stays horizontal through point C. Nothing, this uh, couple doesn't even affect it, so it keeps on going horizontal at negative 4. Finally, I come to my support, which is 10, supported B, positive 10, so from, from negative 4, it's going to cause it to jump up 10 to the value of 6 again. Once again, nothing happens between there and the end of the cantilever, so I'm just going horizontal. And here I have a negative 6 is my vertical component of that sloping load, which takes it back down to 0, which makes it close. So I label that as 6 also. And uh, I've got a good shear diagram. Now, let's draw our moment diagram from that. We've got all of our important points. It would be nice to note that is 1 degree, 0 degrees, and 0 degrees. There's a good shear diagram. Okay, going down to the moment diagram. I have a, I'm at a, a pin support, so my moment starts off at zero, and there's no external moment applied there. So I start off with the um, slope of my moment diagram, the value of my shear diagram. So it starts off positive, sloping upwards, because I got positive six shear. It goes up to a point right here where it's going to go to zero, where my slope's going to go to zero. What's that value? It's the area of this triangle that's 6 by 3 divided by 2 because it's a triangle. So 6 times 3 is 18 divided by 2 is 9. So it's going to go up to 9, flatten out. And then it's going to start going down, negative, because that's the negative shear, by the area of this triangle from here to here. I'm going to label that 9. That's a vertex. Then it's going to go down in this area of this triangle, which is 4 by 2, divided by 2, or 4 total feet, foot kips down to, negative, to 5, from 9 to 5. The change is 4, so it kind of looks something like that. This is not to scale. Label that point as 5. From here, my slope just can, starts to be positive, so it's going to be a, I mean negative, four so it's going to be a straight line and so from here point where I'm at uh, five I'm going to go down total to the, let's go down to this uh, concentrated moment because we're going to have a big jump there or a jump so from here to here the end of the distributed load to uh, the concentrated couple I've got an area of the shear diagram of four times negative 4, so it's going to go down by negative 16, which will take it from 5 in a straight line all the way down to negative 11. Let's kind of draw that semi to scale. It's a straight line connecting those points, and I'm at negative 11. From there, I've got a concentrated couple of 5 foot kips. Think about what direction that causes compression. It causes compression in the top, so it's going to be a positive concentrated moment, or it creates positive internal full, internal moment. So it's going to jump up by 5 from a le negative 11 to negative 6. But I'm going to, then I'm going to continue sloping down at negative 4 foot kips per foot. So that's going to take me down this area, negative 4 times 3 is 12. So it's going to take me from negative 6, minus 12 is negative 18. It's going to take me all the way down here to negative 18. OK, 
kind of to scale. And finally I'm to the point where I should close to zero because I'm at the end of a cantilever. There's no, no applied moment. So the area of this, tri this uh, rectangle is 6 times 3, positive 18. So that's going to take me up positive 18 from negative 18 back to zero. Yay, it closes. So that's my moment diagram. And as I said, we can check our uh, values up here that we got for uh, internal forces at C with uh, looking at what the shear is at point C, which is negative 4 by my calculation from my shear and moment diagram. It's the same thing, negative 4. What's my moment at point C? Negative 3 is what I calculated. Um, I'm going uh, halfway from... 5 to negative 11, we said was the area of this rectangle, 16, so half of that's 8. So 5 minus 8 is going to put me at negative 3. Sure enough, verifies my calculation up there. Okay, I'm asked for the maximum shear and moment. I just picked the maximum absolute value, which is 6 kips. And it's positive. Um, M max, my moment, maximum moment, is the maximum absolute value. And that's equal to negative 18 foot kips at that point right there. That's the answers I was looking for. Okay, now let's go over and look at this other problem, which is similar. Uh, we have these loads. We were given that this reaction at A is uh, negative one kip, so one kip, one kip down. We see this reaction at B is five kips up. At the other end of this, we have a uh, upward sloping load at a three, still at that three four angle slope of ten kips. We have the two kips per foot and a concentrated couple of fifteen foot kips. So we put that all on a free body diagram to look at the internal forces at C with these internal external forces, one, negative, eight that I calculated from deriving from uh, dividing that into its components of eight kips horizontal and one kip, uh, six kips up. So uh, some of forces in the X give me that, and I've assumed, note that I've assumed positive values over here on the right side, gives me a, uh, internal axial force of positive 8 or tension, 8 kips tension. So my force is in the, X, in the Y gives me that my shear force is uh, negative 1 kips. So on the left on the right side it's going to be up. And some of moments equation gives me that my internal moment is 1 times 8, this external this support force minus 15 my couple and the internal moment becomes at C is 7 foot kips. Once again we'll be able to check that here in a minute. Going over to my shear diagram I'm going to start off at the support with a negative 1 label that then nothing happens all the way shear wise all the way over to the support so I can just draw this line all the way over there at negative one. At this point the shear diagram is going to jump up five. Well, negative one plus five is going to take me to four. Then I'm going to start sloping down at two kips per foot. Over five feet is going to be a total change from here to here of ten. Four minus ten is going to take me down to negative six kind of draw that in as an end point. And then the six kip component of this sloping force here is going to take me back up to zero. Yay, that's what I want. Closure. closure. I need to know where this point is of zero shear for my moment diagram. Uh, area under the load diagram is the change in the shear diagram, which I want to be equal to 4, from 4 to 0. So what 
portion of this rectangle up here that's two kip per foot high. Obviously it's going to be four divided by two or two feet over here to that point. And now I'm ready to finally to do my uh, moment diagram. Once again, I have no moment at either end. I'm going to start off with a negative slope. This is kind of an unusual one. I'm going to go from at a ne negative one slope over three feet. So the area, the change between these two points on the moment diagram is the area under the shear diagram, which is three times one, negative one. So it's negative three. Then I'm going to, this is once again a positive, creates positive internal moment. So it's going to cause it to jump up by 15. Negative 3 plus 15 takes me all the way to 12. Something like that. 12 foot kips. Then my moment diagram is going to continue sloping down at this same slope, which is negative 1 per foot. So in that distance, 5 plus 2 feet, 7 feet, it's going to go down by 7 foot kips from 12 to 5, which might be about there. So that's 5. Okay, then once again, I have kind of a weird looking moment diagram, but it is what it is. It's going to now start sloping upward at a second degree curve, upward positive decreasing to zero at this point. So let's find out what that point is. The change between here and that point is the area under the shear diagram. Four times two for a triangle divided by two. That's four. So it's going to slope upward on a second degree curve to nine, which might be kind of like there, and it's going to have flat slope at a vertex. And then it's going to slope down negative, because that's the value of my shear diagram, by this amount from 9. This I have a triangle. If that's 2 feet, then that's 3 feet. So 6 times 3 divided by 2 is 9, and it's negative. So it's going to go from 9 to 0, which makes me happy because I want to close to 0 at a support. So it's going to go to 0. And... That's verified by that closure. Now let's uh, look at our uh, forces at C. I had, looks like I have negative 1 from my shear diagram, which confirms this value. I have a value of, what is this value right here? It is 5 feet over from this point where my moment was 12. So the area under the shear diagram is the change in the moment diagram between those two points. So 12 minus 5 times negative 1, or you know what I mean, is going to give me a value of 7 at that point, 12 minus 5. So that's confirming this uh, value answer I had up here. Last but not least, I have a my maximum shear, just looking at my diagram, is negative 6 at that support. It's kips. My maximum moment is positive 12 foot kips at that uh, concentrated moment.